Welcome to Banks Unboxing, where every day is Christmas. We've designed a monster truck cooling system, and you're going to be the first to see it. This radiator was built in Glendale, Arizona, shipped here, shipped to Utah, shipped back to here, so box is a bit shopworn. Let's see what we've got in here. Ron Davis does some beautiful stuff, and those guys have been around a while. So I'm, I'm expecting something really beautiful here. Jay, can you give me a hand? Uh, pull the box off for me here. I, I think yeah, this is. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a lot of radiator in here. Okay, here we go. Holy mackerel. Try it now. All right. Oh, I love these things. You can just stomp all over this stuff. There we go, had to do it. All right, what have we got here? Two big 16 inch spall fans. I'm gonna put this fans up. There we go. This is the engine cooling radiator, but we've got another one. Whoa, the magic of editing. We already had the CAD drawing of the chassis. So in CAD, Joshua installed the engine cooling radiator and the intercooling radiator, and then we plumbed it, ran the hoses, we mounted the pumps, and we decided where we needed the fittings, in and out for water, temp bungs, drain bungs, fill bungs, all of that stuff and we sent them to Sparks Motors in Utah with the drawings. You guys have probably seen Sparks Motors on Diesel Brothers. And Rush Kane over there at Sparks installed beautifully. I mean, this guy's got some chops when it comes to fabrication and TIG welding. I mean, Rush, you laid down some serious dimes. Beautiful stuff. When Rush was done, he put them back in the box that's what we just unboxed. These babies are finished and ready to go in the chassis. But first, we're going to test them in the dyno cell. In other words, these fans provide the airflow. It's not about vehicle velocity in a monster truck. So the cooling system in my mind is more like what you'd see on a trophy truck running Baja. Only most trophy trucks don't have a supercharged twin turbo diesel V8 in them. So that's why the second radiator. So let me tell you how this is going to get laid out in the truck. There'll be two separate systems, and we'll start with the engine cooling radiator because that's a simple one. We have a Duramax engine. It has an internal gear-driven water pump. The beauty is you can run the engine with no fan belt, and in this case there is no fan belt because the cooling fans are mounted directly to the radiator. We're going to be measuring the temperature into and out of the radiator. So there'll be a temp probe on both sides of the radiator. I like to look at the temperature across the engine. By that I mean, what's the temp gain from in to out, from water pump in to thermostat out? My comfort zone is eight to 12 degrees temp gain across the engine. If I'm not in that range, especially if I'm over 12 degrees, I'm looking for either more radiator or more water pump. I'm looking for something more. And we'll have a coolant flow meter in line with the cold side of that system. Let me walk you through the airflow. The hot air leaving the turbo compressors goes into the intercooler. That's the cooler between the turbochargers and the supercharger. Gets cooled, it enters the supercharger and out of the supercharger into the big Whipple after cooler and then into the manifold and into the intake ports. On both systems, we have an inch and three quarter line coming out of the charge air cooler low temp radiator and into 
a Stewart EMP pump. These inline pumps are pretty stout in their own respect, but we're freight training a pair of them if necessary. So when you freight train a pair of them, you get more flow and more pressure capacity. After these pumps, there'll be an inline flow meter through the intercooler and out of the intercooler with inch and a half back to the low temp radiator. On the aftercooler system, it's a bit different because there's multiple inlets and outlets on that big Whipple aftercooler. Same pumping system, one or possibly two of the Stewart EMP pumps will come out of the pumps at inch and three quarter, go through the flow meter, then it branches out to two one inch lines into the aftercooler, two one inch lines out of the aftercooler, teed into an inch and a half return line. Once again, we'll be measuring temperature into and out of the aftercooler. And once again, I've found that this eight to 12 degree thing kind of works good there as well. So there'll be a flow meter, of course, on each one of those systems. So there's going to be three flow meters and six temp sensors. So whose sensors are we going to use? Ours. We're very deep in the instrumentation business. So here we have a variety of temperature sensors and these sensors feed into one of our four channel analog modules. Are you gonna show me doing this? <laughs> There you go, analog sensor module right there. All of the sensors feed in to the bottom of this guy, and this is, a, this is our communication bus. All the sensors will feed into the harness, which is hiding in the bottom here. I'm making a mess out of this, this layout. So there you go. This guy plugs into the bottom of the module and all of your sensors are pre-terminated and they just snap on and you're off to the races. From here we feed into our data monster or more properly our iDash data monster which is this guy right here. Now it's not illuminated, but you can read up to eight readings on that screen at one time. And you can have up to five pages of eight or less. You can put anywhere from two to eight readings on here. This is an instrument that reads hundreds of different things, but it's also a data logger. So there's a micro SD slot right below the bank's logo and you just pop a micro SD card in there and you can log at 20, up to 20 samples per second for months. You could log more than 30 24 hour Le Mans races easily. All the data from the monster truck, not just this, all the data, everything about the engine, the turbochargers, their RPM, all the temperatures, all the pressures, all the flows, and anything else you might imagine, up to 100 channels of data and up to 20 hertz per channel can be logged into this little sucker. Then you can play it back after the run or you can pop the card out, put it into your laptop and chart all this stuff on Microsoft Excel or the, there's a lot of other programs you could use. So what about this Ron Davis cat? What's he all about? What's his company all about? Well, kind of like banks, Ron Davis is a family operation. He's in the middle, but there's three generations there. His mother's there, he's there, and some of his children are there. Even his brother-in-law's there. 
at banks, I'm here, my daughter Elizabeth is here, my son-in-law Chris is here, and my grandson Eric is here. So it's a three-generation operation. I like dealing with other family businesses. Tony Davis started the radiator business in 1976. In 1985, his son Ron bought the business. So by 1990, Ron Davis was equipping all the top-tier teams in every form of racing you can think of throughout the country. And in 1990, he decided we're only doing racing radiators from now on. Fast forward to 2010, and Ron got really serious about his CAD capabilities, design capabilities. They use SolidWorks, we're a SolidWorks house, so we can interchange design information over the web. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, I forgot to show you the front of this thing. I cannot wait to get this in the dino cell and see if it performs as good as it looks.